In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at how DNS is used with Active Directory. Active Directory cannot work without DNS. Clients use DNS to find the service record on the network like domain controllers. Once you finish watching this video, you will understand why Active Directory requires DNS. I will now change to my domain controller, NYDC1, and have a look at the DNS records that have been created for this domain. First of all, I will open Server Manager from the Quick Launch Bar. Once open, I will select the Tools option and then select DNS to open the DNS Admin tool. If I expand downwards, I will get to the forward lookup zone, itfreetraining.local. If I expand itfreetraining.local, you can see there are a number of different folders. These are created automatically. To understand how the records in these containers work, I will have a look inside one of them. In this case, the container underscore TCP. In here you can see that there are a number of DNS records present. On this network, there are currently two domain controllers, so this means that there are four DNS records for each domain controller. At the top, you can see the DNS record with underscore GC, and in the data part, ladc1.itfreetraining.local. This DNS record is basically saying that there is a global catalog available for the server LADC1. Under this, you can see a second DNS record called underscore GC. In the data section of this DNS record is nydc1.itfreetraining.local. You can see that the client only needs to request the DNS record underscore GC. When it requests this DNS record, underscore GC, it will obtain the IP address for a global catalog in the domain itfreetraining.local. You can see using this method, the client can find out the IP address of a global catalog server without having to know any information about the domain itself. All the client needs to know is where to look for the DNS record. Below this, you can see that other records exist for Active Directory services. For example, the next one down is the DNS records for Kerberos. These DNS records allow the client to find domain controllers on the network that can perform authentication using Kerberos. The next DNS record is underscore K password. This DNS record indicates the location of a service on the network that is able to perform Kerberos password changes. The last DNS record is underscore LDAP. These DNS records indicate the location on the network of servers on the network that can perform LDAP lookups in Active Directory. You can see by these DNS records, it is just a matter of the client querying the DNS records for the service that they want to find a server that can provide that service. If I open the properties for one of these service records, in this case a DNS record for underscore GC, this will show the settings configured for this DNS record. Service records like these are essential for allowing clients to find Active Directory services on the network, like domain controllers and global catalog servers. You should now understand why Active Directory requires DNS in order to operate. Without it, clients cannot locate servers on the network that provide Active Directory services. Service records contain a number of different settings. Some of these DNS settings can be changed after the DNS record is created. For example, the priority of the DNS record. It should be remembered that these DNS records are created automatically and should not need to be changed. I'm simply going through the settings to give you a better understanding of how service records work. Service records with a low priority setting are used before the service records with a higher priority setting. When there are two or more service records with the same priority, the next value, wait, is used. All the weights of all the DNS records are added together and divided by how many there are to decide which service record is used. To understand how this works, consider these four service records. Three of the service records have the priority of zero, and the last one has a priority of one. When the clients request the service record, 
DNS will return one of the service records with the lowest priority level, which in this case is zero. The next question is, out of the three service records, which one does it return? To determine this, DNS will add up the weights of all the service records, which in this case will give a total of 200. Now when the client requests the service record, it is a matter of deciding out of these three service records which one will be used. To do this, the weight is divided by the total which gives a percentage. As you can see, the first service record will be used 50% of the time, and the second and third service records will be used 25% of the time. The fourth service record will not be used because the value of the priority for the fourth record is higher than the other three. You can see how the priority and weight values are used together to determine which service records are used by the client. The next value in the service record is the port number used by the service. Even though you can change the value of these records, as we will see in a moment, these DNS records are automatically created and thus any changes you make will be overwritten later on. The purpose of this demonstration is to give you a better understanding of how Active Directory requires services records in order to operate. On a production environment, you should not need to modify these records. Below this is the host offering the service record. Notice also the tick box, delete this record when it becomes stale, is ticked. This means that the service record will eventually expire and be removed from the DNS server assuming that scavenging is enabled on the DNS server. This is how DNS will remove old service records when servers like domain controllers are removed from the network. To demonstrate this, I will go back to DNS Manager and then delete all the service records. Since this is not a production environment, I can afford to do this, but I would not recommend that you do something like this on a production network. Deleting service records like these on a production network will mean that clients on the network will not be able to perform functions like authentication and log on to the network. I will now go back to Server Manager and from Tools select Services. I will then restart the service Active Directory Domain Services. This will in turn restart for other services. What restarting these services does is force these services to register any DNS records that they require in the DNS server. The process requires all four services to be stopped and then started again. This does take a bit of time, so I have sped up the video so we do not have to wait. Once the services have restarted, I will go back to the DNS manager. No service records are visible. However, you will notice that if I press F5 to refresh the view, they will now appear. Notice there are four service records for the domain controller NYDC1. The domain controller LADC1 has not appeared as yet. In time, the services for the LADC1 domain controller will re-register their service records on the DNS server and LADC1 will also appear. If you do not want to wait for this to occur, you can always restart the services like I did on NYDC1. The point to remember is that this will only occur if dynamic updates are enabled on the zone file. To check this, I will right click on Zone and select the Properties option. In the Properties for the zone, notice that dynamic updates is configured for Secure Only. This is an important fact to remember. If you do not have dynamic updates enabled and there are changes made to a domain controller, the service records will not be updated. A simple change, like changing the IP address of the domain controller, will require the service record to change. If the service record does not change, clients will not be able to locate the domain controller. The next point to remember is that if you do not have dynamic updates enabled and you have scavenging enabled, scavenging will, given enough time, remove all your service records from the DNS server and thus prevent clients from being able to locate Active Directory services on the network. When supporting Active Directory, it is best to leave dynamic updates enabled so that your clients will always be able to find domain controllers and other services even if changes are made to your network. 
The services records that I have looked at so far are found under underscore TCP. This means that these services records are used by the clients when reliable transmission is used. If I look under the container underscore UDP, there are service records for Kerberos and KPassword that refer to the domain controllers LADC1 and NYDC1. If the client wanted to connect to these services using unreliable communication, it would look in the DNS server in this container. Under this are the two containers Domain DNS Zones and Forest DNS Zones. These are used with Active Directory application partitions. You can see there is a lot of information that the client can use for locating resources on the network using DNS. However, all these so far have been linked to the domain. In this case, the client would need to know to look under itfreetraining.local for this information. There is also another zone created called underscore msdcs. This is a zone file created for Microsoft clients. Remember that there are other non-Microsoft directory services that use LDAP. Without this zone, a Microsoft client would not know if they were obtaining a service record for a Microsoft or a non-Microsoft directory service. The next reason why this zone is required is that it contains information for all domains in the forest. The first domain you create in the forest will become the root domain and this zone will be named after that. So essentially, this is the MSDCS zone for the itfreetraining.local forest. So essentially, you have a zone file that contains service records for all services in the forest. Why is this important? For Active Directory replication to occur correctly, this needs to happen at the domain and forest level. For this reason, all domain controllers require knowledge of all domain controllers in the forest so that they can configure replication correctly. Using this zone, they can obtain this information and configure replication correctly. You can start to see why DNS is so important to Active Directory. One trick that I like to do when replication has failed on a domain controller, in particular a new domain controller, I like to change the DNS settings on the domain controller to point to a DNS server that is up to date. By doing this, the domain controller can obtain the correct information and configure replication correctly. Once replication has occurred, I can change the DNS settings back to the local server. If I expand downwards, notice there are a number of different folders. In the folder underscore TCP, notice there are service records for the two domain controllers currently running in the forest. All the information for the forest is listed here. For example, the client can find out not only the locations of domain controllers, but can also find out information about which sites are configured. All this information is required by a domain controller when configuring a replication system that works at the forest level, and this is why this zone is required and is so important. This video has looked at how DNS and service records work with Active Directory and there has been a lot of information covered. The main points to remember is that service records are required for clients to find Active Directory resources. These service records need to be present in your DNS server. These can be created using dynamic updates or manually. If you do create the service records manually, for example you use a DNS server that is not Microsoft, you will need to manually update these if there are changes on your network, like adding, removing, and changing the IP address of domain controllers. The last point to remember is that if you enabled scavenging in DNS, scavenging is covered in another video and is the process of removing DNS records from DNS that have not been updated after a period of time, make sure that dynamic updates is enabled if scavenging is enabled. If dynamic updates are not enabled, and the DNS records are eligible for scavenging, the DNS records will be removed and the clients on the network will not be able to access resources on the network. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how the service records and dynamic update are used to allow clients to find Active Directory resources. 
Thanks for watching this free video from IT Free Training. Just one of the always free videos. See you next time.